Um, you know, we had Fedora 18, which was a interesting cycle um, with Anaconda and some of the other, you know, things that were going on, which took it a little bit longer than the normal six months. Um, and I think for for anyone, you know, in a community position, there's always been very like we are a time-based project. Mm -hmm. uh, this is how things go. Uh, to be like, well, things are a little different this time is always, you know, when you're, when it's more or less your first full cycle go round, you kind of feel the, the pressure a little bit. Sure. Um, but I guess it, it leaves you <laughs> older and wiser, I suppose. Um, It's been interesting as, as Red Hat has evolved and really is, you know, sort of the, the new, you know, even just looking at, at DevOps in general and as the cloud has become more of a actuality for, for most people rather than a, a wish or a pipe dream, um, to sort of watch the face of what has been going into Fedora and what people are, you know, wanting to develop in Fedora, or what technologies they want to use in Fedora sort of evolving. I mean, we've really gone from a, you know, this is going to be the year of the Linux, Linux desktop to, you know, sort of the, some of the features that we're seeing now and whether it's, you know, the, the IAS and PaaS kinds of stuff. Sure. Or, you know, just the, you know, you and I have talked about the, uh, Oh, what was it? The uh, shared storage? Sure, moving sure. Moving your yep. VMs that shared storage and, and all those kinds yep. of technology, which are really, I mean, that's some of it is interesting on the desktop, yeah. but I mean, the, it makes really cool, cool stuff happen. Yeah, it does. When you go to the cloud. And then and as leader, uh, aside from uh, release challenges, have there been other particular large challenges? Or, or to phrase that a different way, have there been particular challenges from which lessons have learned, with, which are informing you in your second year? Um, so we're moving to a new conference model. You know, we're sort of moving not away from the FUDCon, but we're you know we're having a, a new event called Flock, which is in Charleston. So it was just a you know maybe we can come up with a fun acronym. How about this word? Maybe we could. Well, no, this just yeah. sounds like a great word. You know, have all the uh, contributors sort of flock to the Fedora event, and that yeah. sort of the name that it has. Um, it's been a challenge partially because, you know, we've always done these one a quarter in different regions of the world. And I think over the past several years I have organized, helped organize, attended nearly one per quarter yeah. since I started at Red Hat, which was in November of 2010, I want to say. And this is more of... You know, whereas a FUDCon, a regular FUDCon was a Fedora users and developers conference, this is more geared towards this contributor. So if you think about it more in terms of like how the OpenStack uh, sort of summit, the design summit yeah. sort of works, uh, that's sort of the idea that it was geared around. Like really getting, you know, we have so many groups that have people from all over participating, yeah, yeah. whether it's documentation or ambassadors, and it's sort of, you know, it, it always feels weird when you would come to the United States, but you would know that all these other people were yeah. all over the world and can't really That's a little get in there. Cause, so, because when I think uh, OpenStack design, OpenStack is the upstream. So right. they, you know, they put in the blueprints. You yes. have contributors upstream, but you're not the upstream. So how do you you balance? Because I guess people are reporting from what's going on in upstream, and then you're deciding. Yeah, in a lot of cases, you know, it's a lot of times, you know, when they go and put features into Fedora, it's not necessarily something that they're writing for Fedora proper. I mean, like even something like like OpenShift, sure, or Gluster, or etc. I mean, it's a lot of times it's those contributors that you know want to whether they're part of the Gluster project and they want to get it into Fedora, or they're part of Fedora and they just yeah. happen to like Gluster and they want to pull it in. Um, Nonetheless, you know, when you start looking at all of those things and you start putting them together, it's sort of the alignment of multiple technologies when yeah. they, you know, rely on the same pieces or different pieces. Or I think more importantly, when you look at, uh, you know, if we have a bunch of people who are interested in cloud, sure. you know, how are we making images? You know, what are all the pieces that are related to that that, yeah. that we actually care about, no matter what upstream or, you know, project that we're coming from or if it's just Fedora itself? And then will there be any kind of Red Hat direction because they've lose? Uh, um, is, is I think I think the the majority of the direction is uh, we hope that you are taking these funds that we are bequeathing you with and uh, doing effective things with them. And if you know if the conference is not necessarily what you're hoping it will turn out to be, um, so, you know I think there's definitely the hope that you know this is a new model for us. Um, 
but we're hoping to come out of this with, you know, a, a good solid plan for, you know, the next six months to one year of work, you know, whether that's people's features or just general community improvements that we'd like to make, you know, improving the onboarding process yeah. or, you know, XYZ part of the website is confusing, maybe we should, you know, there's sure. all sorts of different things that you can tackle yeah. in a place like that or make plans for at least. Um, so I think it's just more of a matter of, you know, do good like it's always been and yep. and you know and if not let's you know fail faster recognize that and move on because then, you know perpetuating yeah, that sure. just seems like a poor idea and then what about the the feature wrangling which i know is always a challenge uh is the flock idea uh, where you'll have i guess what do they call it in the open stack the bl design blueprints or something to that effect yeah, so that will be the, the feature wrangling and you go from there yeah a little bit but i mean i know it at summit from talking to uh terry who's you probably know is sort of the release manager for that particular project um they organize for not for the conference part but for the summit part you know they have ptls for each project so yeah. they actually have sort of a track and we're still bouncing out as we've gotten all the the uh, talks in you can actually look at the proposals on the website uh, we're still sort of balancing out you know, how is that going to work? Because most of the people who work in OpenStack, for example, at least as I understand it, um, tend to stay sort of focused on one project or maybe two. Whereas in Fedora, you know, we may have people who work in infrastructure and they also work in, you know, release engineering type stuff or QA. Uh, people who are ambassadors may also do translations or people who are, you know, in documentation may also do translations. So I think there's a little bit more overlap for a lot of people. Um, and when it comes to, you know, voting on things like that, it's hard to say, like, that I, Robin, of whatever, the marketing team know exactly what, you know, another team should actually be doing. So, you know, if it's one very large team against a small team, like, you know, we have to go through it and sort of weight the votes. And so it's, it's definitely a, uh, there is polling slash voting, but there's definitely going to be guidance, and it's from... Uh, many, many different areas being represented by the projects. We've got, you know, a couple different, you know, we've got boards like FAMSCO and FESCO and the board, and we're having all those people each, you know, elect a person to come and be on the committee to select papers. And that kind of stuff. Now just to argue devil's advocate with that amount of organizational change, which always brings with it its own set of politics and challenges, mm -hmm. would you expect that that would impact a Fedora 20 or 21 release cycle? I don't. I mean, I think people are pretty excited about it, and we're, I mean, it's going to be at the beginning of August of this year, so uh, I guess when you say impact, do you mean negatively impact, or do you mean impact Either way. what actually it is could, going it, to be it, the it, output? It, it could, could be positive, I think perhaps I, by well, having the new is, cycle. Is, is that hopefully it will impact the next release that we would be working on, which would be Fedora 20. I thought you meant negatively impact our ability to produce nah, it. I was nah, like, I'm not always looking for so. negative. I, yeah, really. The glass is half full. Yes, well... Uh, or more. <laughs> that ice. Um, yeah, no, I think we definitely are hoping to see lots of stuff uh, for Fedora 20. And, and I, I think of that both in terms of features that we want to see. Uh, more importantly, I'm really looking forward to some of the new infrastructure and QA types of ideas that people are talking about in Fedora. So we've got people talking about continuous integration and systems testing, yeah. you know, kind of. We move into the the future where we don't have a broken rawhide. You know that that old perpetual story of rawhides that was broken. We can't use it. Gosh, Wait, well, if we could gate people's stuff, yeah. you know, with the cloud, you can do builds on the sides and you know prevent all sorts of bad things from happening by running automated testing before things happen. So sure. <laughs> uh, and then when you talk about rawhide not being broken all the time. Um, and everybody always loves talking about the rolling release cycle. Is right. that a part of the discussion, or is no that a non-starter? Really, I mean, no one has very specifically brought that up at this point. I think at this point what we're really looking at is can we get this far? You know, can we get to a point where we've got a couple different pieces of the operating system, like, you know, we can test a couple things and expand from there and see if we're actually getting gains out of it. Um, I think huh. if it, you know, becomes very solid, then, you know, there's all sorts of options, and I don't think anyone is, you know, projecting that far into the future at this point. We're just hoping to have the conversation and move forward and, and do some good on it. So we've got good. the QA folks looking at that kind of stuff. And um, 20 will be the first uh, that will be outside of the scope of RHEL 7 in three years from a Red Hat upstream perspective. Does that, from, you, from your uh, perspective as a user and as a leader, does that... Uh, unleash the project in a certain way from any constraints whatsoever? Um, 
in terms of Fedora, it's, I mean, that those release dates aren't necessarily always, I mean, I think people recognize the ebb and flow of sure. where the Red Hat releases are coming. Um, I don't know that it necessarily frees anything up in terms of like, woo, let's go crazy, but I think, you know, when we start talking about things like, gosh, continuous integration and really improving some of the inner parts of the infrastructure of the project, like how can we make, how can we bake the sausage better rather than improve just the sausage ingredients, but, you know, can we get a better oven, you know, that kind of yeah. stuff. Remove sodium know? nitrate, it's yeah. <laughs> Yes. Um, I think that's where you sort of have the the real big opportunity to do that because okay. there's not always going to be a, a huge influx of uh, earth shaking features, we'll say. Um, and I know that in the past, at least, we've seen you know kind of the you'll see the upward trajectory of numbers of features, and then after a particular release of Rel comes out, you'll sort of see that taper off a little bit. Oh, and I can't was Rel six uh, Fedora. 14? Something like that. But yeah. there was a lot of accelerated stuff on yeah. uh, real time at that time. C groups was the huge mm -hmm. thing, and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And of course, KVM, because KVM was just the late edition in what, Rel yeah. 5, 6, or whatever it was. Yeah, and then we saw all the new sorts of, uh, you know, I think there's also the potential for, you know, sort of long term kinds of change, or changes yeah. that, that can't yeah. really land in the space of six months. I mean, if you look at something like, like GNOME 3 or System D, we're still. Um, you know, it's right now we're at the tail end of, of what those people really wanted to implement as, you know, part of those original visions.